we're gonna have the front mounts for the bed. So seven and a quarter inch long. We've got a nice bevel on the top. That's where it will weld on to the main uh, condensate tank on the front. On the back side, just flat face. I've cleaned out the inside of it with a wire wheel. Cut out a couple of plates, quarter inch material. I have a half inch hole drilled in the middle. So these will sit just inside. They're actually gonna lay up flush. So I'm gonna chamfer this edge. I'm also gonna chamfer the edge on these plates. But there's no real good way to mount it in the vise. So before I chamfer the edges, I've already cleaned up the middle. We're gonna drop a half inch bolt down inside, get this welded in place. Then I can put a nut in the vise and be able to tighten this thing down and work these edges over. And then uh, get these chamfered, get these chamfered, get them welded in. Then these can get set in place uh, on the bed, welded on. Um, I'll take the bed back out there, set it down on the frame and center it up. Mark out the bottom of the bolt hole onto the frame, drill that out. Then the front mount can be set down, bolted in place. And then I decided I'm gonna do the front mount first so that the bed is bolted down and then I can pull my most accurate measurement to place the next cross member. One tab, one to go. These are all chamfered out. Have these chamfered all the way around. Drop it in, make it set level. I did leave a little bit of spacing around it. It's just more penetration for the weld. give it a little bit of thread protection from the spatter. Because I got the welder turned up pretty hot so it's going to kick around a little bit. Burning 3 16 to quarter inch and it's a structural bed mount. I don't want it going anywhere. Potato. All right, so there we go. One bed mount. Yeah, you can see where the spatter caught it, or maybe that's where the cup touched. But pretty nice and flat. I'll probably tune it up with a file just a little bit because this is gonna lay straight on the frame rail like so. So I don't want any high spots that are gonna take it can't the bed one way or the other so I'll just flush that off real nice all right gotta build another one so instead of walking over the bolt bin getting a couple more nuts that I can throw in here for thread protection I'm gonna show you guys another way to save the threads this is an old pipe liner trick turn your acetylene way down till you got a heavy soot and smoke the threads.
that soot will keep any spatter from sticking anywhere on there. Quick and easy trick for you guys. Perfect threads. Nothing stuck. There we go. So that's two bed mounts. Now I need to get the bed in here and measure out where these are going to sit after I flush these off and get them stuck on. So the front mounts, I got my holes drilled. It actually kind of sucked. If I had come out here and looked, there's this set of holes. I could have offset my stud and given myself a little bit more room here and use those ones. But instead, I had to drill new holes. Um, so I set it up one inch gap off the cab. That was kind of a shoot from the hip. I was going to go for three quarters of an inch, but I liked it better at one inch. I liked the look of it better. Give me a little bit more room for the... Uh, cooling rack um, so that's mounted up in the front it's not bolted down it's just sitting flush on the frame right now I moved my 4x4 back to expose these bolt holes so I could pull my measurement to see where I need to place on the bed rail the rear cross member that I'm gonna put in for now and ends up being uh, 80 and a half inches from the inside edge of the tank to that bolt hole so I have that marked out um, here on the edges this is uh, center line so I'm gonna be using this exact same material which is two inch wide so an inch on either side of that that'll be centered right there I do plan to deck this thing with two by four so I have a line an inch and a half down that's where my cross member will connect and it's a total from that line to the frame of five inches. So I'll have a solid cross member all the way across and two short standoffs underneath with a stud hanging out just like I did those ones. Um, and now because I'm always using scrap material for all of my projects, not one piece of this material is straight. Like not, not even remotely. The camera doesn't do it justice but you can see there's a big bow in that one and there's a pretty good bow in that one right about there and the reason I was okay with that setting the flatbed up the way I did I'm going to have cross members in there eventually for the trailer hitch now because nothing is straight I had to use a ratchet strap and pull this thing square to the frame now I will position this cross member and get it welded in then I can take that strap off that will hold the bed square to the chassis with those two or those four mounts so those two up there and the one will be on the cross members back here and then when I go to put um, that cross member in I'm gonna have to wrap a ratchet strap all the way around the frame of the bed and suck it together that's why I left the crown of these going out because I'm gonna end up pulling it in when I put this cross member in and the two additional cross members. So that will pull this back as straight as I could ever get it for using scrap metal. But that's as far as I'm getting today because it's uh, over 100 degrees and I'm miserable. So probably going to go inside in the shade and cut this cross member and head for home. You guys already saw me build the standoffs one more time. So, I didn't need to show you a second time. But, because these ones were so short, I actually welded the caps on, then took a measurement with my uh, caliper and scribe center line, punched the hole and welded the bolt in from the backside. 
those are all welded up and man I wasn't a welder yesterday but I are one today pretty looking welds for a junky old gas fire build well I mean it's nicer than the welds on the gas fire itself which is kind of bad but hey the bed will look good and as long as it lasts and this is a cross member it just needs to be structural I went through and chamfered the edges and plus because this is a rolled corner pipe it left a real nice chamfer to fill in all the way and then of course chamfer the inside and these and yeah all the typical fabric cobble nonsense all right let's go get it fitted on the truck Sometimes you forget to hit the play button. So this is how I set this up. Got a two by four, and I want this to be flush with the top of the rail. Stuck a board over top, clamp down onto this board and onto the bottom of the rail. That set everything down to set my spacing to where it's nice and flush. Did that on both sides, had a ratchet strap all the way around it so that I pinched the uh, flatbed sides together. I ran a bead in the corners where I could access it both sides. Took all the blocking and all the strapping off, fully welded it in. So at this point, I can pull that ratchet strap off, pull this 4x4 out of here, and the bed is mounted. The next thing I need to tackle is getting the bottom barrel mounted. As soon as that mount, however I configure it in this vague area, um, then the flatbed can come off. I can build my tank inside in the shade. I can set up this rear tank back here. And then one thing I'm gonna do, because I set this up to where I'd have two by four spacing up top, obviously I've got this gaping hole right here. I'm gonna build a cap to go over the top of this because, uh, well, what for, I really don't like bees living in my truck. And that's a ready-made bee house. So that'll get capped off <laughs> and then, uh, bottom barrel mount that yeah I'll figure out where I'm going from there but hey the bed is on it's completely mounted it'll get more mounts up here later on but I'm not worried about those right now this is good I'm, I'm happy gotta start designing this